That's a lot of grind. Try and take it from me, must be out your mind.
lot of shine. Running up the numbers, that's a lot of grind. Try and take it from me, must be out your mind. Hello, thank you for tuning into our live stream tonight on Catchmark Sportsnet. My name is Jonah Kelly. I'm here with Connor Rath. We're here live from Montague's gym, uh, getting ready for a varsity sh varsity girls basketball showdown between Montague and Whitehall. We're, uh, we should be in for a good one, huh, Connor? Yeah, definitely. This is a, a big rivalry game for these two. Um, you know, every year, they, the, the battle of the bridge, as, as some might call it, um, and, and this is where no matter how good of a season you have as one of these teams, I have experience with this playing with Montague on their team for, for as long as I did, um, that no matter how the rest of the seasons go, it, if you lose this game as one of these teams, it affects the rest of your season. And, and as a player, the outlook of the rest of the season, this is one that you want to win and you want to go forward with for, for your uh, team. 100%. Um. It's one of those games on your uh, on your calendar that you circle at the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've got uh, 14 minutes until tip off. What are some uh, keys we can look for tonight, Connor? Um, I definitely would say the the defensive part of the game that's going to be important. Um, and not only defense, but but grabbing the defensive rebounds. Um, as you know, if, if you can control the, uh, the the rebounding part of the game and you own that part, um, you're going to have a successful game overall. The more boards you grab, the more time you have the ball, and the more opportunities you can get up the floor um, and, and get get boards or get get points up on the board and and, and almost outscore another team. Definitely. Legendary Rick Zulik once said, the team with the most most rebounds and least amount of turnovers usually wins the basketball game. Yeah, and I, I think looking statistically at, at many a games, that's the case. For sure. What, who, who do you think are some key players for, for this Montague team and, and also this Whitehall team? Um, if you're Whitehall, you got to be ready to stop Kendall Osborne on defense. Um, she puts up some numbers. As yeah. Far as, as far as Whitehall goes, it's, uh, it's pretty early in the season. I hope we've seen it. Yeah, I would definitely say I would agree with you on the Montague side. Uh, Kendall is definitely a, a force to be reckoned with. Um, not only does she play some great defense um, when needed, but she rebounds well. Um, she spaces the floor as, as she shoots shoots almost as well as she rebounds. Um, and and not only that, she's she's tall. And she, she can get to the rack really well um, and, and get a lot of points within three to three to seven feet. Um, 
and it's hard to stop there, especially with how tall she is and, and how well she moves um, for a, a guard of that size. Oh, definitely. Montague definitely has a size advantage tonight. Packed gym here tonight. I mean, I haven't seen one of these since, since last year. Oh, for sure. It's, uh, the parking lot was full about a half an hour before the varsity tip-off. Um, and, and we have two pretty pretty early uh, seasoned coaches here with uh, Nick Thaler uh, on his second year um, of coaching Montague and I uh, uh, can't remember his name. He's on his first year, I'll say that though. Um, Milliron, uh, Coach Milliron on his first year, I, I, as I'm pretty sure, um, it, how do you think having a new coach affects the program, um, especially when you're coming off of, of some players that were in that prior program with another coach? How do you think that affects a, a team and, and the team's chemistry and, and gel together? Yeah, well, I think it can affect it in a lot of different ways. Um, but how you hope it affects it is that it brings a, brings a nice spark to the program. Um, you know, a fresh set of eyes, uh, looking at how things are done, um, never hurts anybody. Um, yeah. Um, I would also say that 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 program, uh, a change in the program like that, um, it has to be an effect all the way down the chain from from your your junior level players and and, and teams all the way up to, to the varsity level, um, and I think especially I've seen it with with Thaler Nick Thaler that 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 has happened through the programs. They're running the offense he wants. They're running the the, the pro the things that they want that he wants and he what he wants to see is his players when they get to the varsity level running and being able to do and I think that's that's one of the most important things is when those players get to the varsity level um, having that experience already knowing what what the, the, the head coach wants that's one of the most important things in a program um, just going from from a new coach standpoint oh definitely as a JV soccer coach at Shelby uh, it's very important to have your your varsity and your JV levels on the same page all the time um, and that JV level is just, um, it's so crucial for preparing players for success uh, at the varsity level. Yeah, definitely. And, and going to that JV aspect, we just saw a pretty physical and pretty lopsided game uh, between the JV just, just a few minutes ago. Um, how do you think seeing the JV and the way they play from a varsity, as a varsity team, how do you think that affects the varsity game and, and those players going forward? Um, I don't think it affects it a whole lot. I think it might give you a little spark at the beginning of the game when your JV team does well. It gives you a little confidence. Uh, seeing a Montague team win in their home gym, um, it's certainly nice to see before your game. Um, I think that wipes away pretty quickly, though, after the opening tip-off. Yeah, uh, another thing, uh, we've recently seen, the, starting this year, we saw it with football, um, but a, a conference change where, where we split the, the conference into two divisions, um, and a lot of the, about half the conference went down to the Rivers Division, and and the other half went up uh, to the Lakes Division. How do you think that affects a season, or, or the outlook of a season when when you're playing? I know a little bit more teams that in the past have been a little bit better. How do you think, as a, a team that's a little in a little bit bigger division but a little bit smaller, how do you think that affects that that team? I think it uh, I think it does a lot of good for them. I think. Uh, I think it really prepares you well for what you're going to see in playoffs, um, especially with all the all the great basketball schools we have in this conference, um, and even that we've added. Um, yep. It it does nothing but get your team better. Yeah. And, and what do you think about that conference change overall? Um, overall, I, I really liked it a lot. Um, I think it evens out the playing field uh, first of all for a lot of schools. Um, and then for other schools who maybe it doesn't do that so much for, I think it, I think it does a better job at preparing them for, uh, for what they're going to see in the postseason. Yep. Um, and, and just looking at, in a basketball game, what do you think are the most important pieces um, on both ends of the ball that that they, this Whitehall team and this Montague team need to win tonight? Well, it's important to force turnovers, put pressure on the other team. Um, you got to do that without fouling, though. Um, yep. Shots from the charity stripe tonight are going to be pretty huge. Yep. And, and not just shots from there, but made shots are, are even more important. Free throw percentage. Um, it, the higher free throw percentage and the more, you, as a team, you make, the more points you're going to put on the board. If you have, if you're, if it, a lot of times you hear it's a, it's a one-point game, 
there's one free throw or two free throws that if you had made, that wins that game or that changes the outlook of the end of the game. Um, and, and that's they're so important, not only at the at the beginning of the game, end of the game, but all the way through. If you have a good free throw shooting team, that's that's hard to stop, especially if they're good at drawing fouls and getting into the double bonus and bonus. Oh, certainly. It definitely makes a huge impact on the outcome of the game. That's why when you hear a lot of uh, professional athletes talking about the last play of the game, what they could have done different, they don't like to spend too much time on that, and they look at those free throws earlier in the game that they could have hit to, yeah. to win that game. Yep. Um, what do you think are going to be the most important things from a coaching aspect? Like, or do you think we should pre they should press tonight? Um, or where do you think that, that as a coach you need to look at to try and evaluate the other team and, and, and kind of counter them in a sense? Um, I think the most important thing is to stick true to what you're best at. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about what the other team's doing. If you got a team that's good at pressing, I would press. If you got a team that's good at playing the zone, that's what I do as well. So you're saying adaptation, basically, the the ability to be able to change on a whim, or or adapt to whatever team that that you have. So if I have an athletic team, I'm gonna I, I should press. What about? I get what you're saying from a a team by team standpoint, but what about? this Manu team or this Whitehall team playing each other, what are some things that you think that they should do to, to counter each other? Certainly. I think uh, Whitehall should be careful about Kendall Osborne and look to uh, double team her a little bit mm -hmm. um, and really block her out in the paint. That's going to be huge for their success. Um, as far as Montague goes, I think, uh, I think that they, they need to look to force some turnovers yep. in the backcourt. Yep. Uh, a thing I'd like to see is it, with a player like Kendall, um, forcing her to, to take shots she doesn't want to take. And I think a great option for this Whitehall team would be actually to run a half-court trap, um, making the ball move. And, and that would not only get the ball out of her hands a little bit more, but it would also make it harder for, for her to get a quality shot off as the floor is going to be a lot, the spacing on the floor is going to be a lot different and you're gonna, they're going to be looking at a lot more layups. Um, but that what that turns into is you need to have good rebounders as well be able to get rebounds when there's when there's layups going up like that because a lot of times it's it's a two v three or, or, or two on two on two or two on one uh, offensively in the rebounding sector and that's where you have to have a, a Whitehall girl step up and, and be able to grab boards. Certainly, We've got about four minutes, 35 seconds to go before tip off, um, and this is uh, Connor Rath and, and Jonah Kelly uh, with Catchmark Sportsnet. Um, we're going to be happy to give you the best announcing that we can give you. Um, this is both of our first first time this season, and, and we'll see how it goes. It's going to be great, Connor. I'm looking forward to it. If you are a business owner, you know that while necessary, technology can be confusing, complex, expensive, and a frustrating endeavor. Catchmark Technologies can help make that technology simple and clean so that your business can easily get its product or service to the market. Whether you need technical support, structured cabling, camera systems, cybersecurity, or digital media advice, Catchmark Technologies is your one-stop tech service shop. Shoot us a call at 616-384-4616, visit our website at catchmarkit.com, or stop into one of our offices in Grand Rapids or Whitehall. Catchmark Technologies, West Michigan's technology problem solvers. I'm Jonah Kelly here with Connor Rath, and we're about three minutes away from tip-off in uh, what's supposed to be a pretty good one in a very packed gym. Yep. Um, one thing I, I'd like to point out, just the size of the student sections here tonight. Um, how do you think a student section plays in a, in a, a game like this? I mean, you, you came from Shelby. Shelby's student sections are always pretty good at home. Um, Montague's, I think, where I came from, have, been, have always been in the past. Pretty quality student sections. How do you think that plays in, in a game, and, and what role do you think that plays? Oh, it's huge. Um, it's 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 a big factor. I remember playing games at Montague's gym, uh, running up and down the floor next to their student section, um, and they let me tell you, if they're anything like they used to be in 2017, they're pretty good at getting in your head. Kind of. Yeah, definitely. Um, the one thing I always remember about Shelby is when you're running down the court, they're all basically standing on the court because they're they are so close to it. Um, we got about two minutes, 30 seconds till tip off. Um, watching warm ups, I think so far, Montague looks like the better shooting team. Um, 
what do you think Monica can do to space the floor a little bit and, and, and give them quality shots and open shots? I think they uh, I think they just if Whitehall comes out in a zone like you were mentioning earlier, I think they need to just space well and they need to hit some shots early on uh, so that Whitehall will respect that and not uh, collapse in on them when they try to drive. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's going to be tough, uh, a tough decision for uh, Coach Milliron whether or not to run a zone against this team. This team is, is, as we know, a good shooting team. But not only that, they have the height to go down low. And I think that that not only help, that helps Montague Tung just from a matchup and a, a, a floor spacing perspective. But for Whitehall, that's a tough matchup. It, do you want to shrink it in and, and take away the, the uh, internal game? Or do you want to... Do you want to space the floor and play man-to-man -man and, and not let them get an outside shot off nearly as much as you would um, an inside shot? I'd rather make I'd rather make Montague beat me by playing good basketball. I'd like to I'd like to run a zone, make him hit some shots first before I switch to that man. Exactly. Um, I think another thing for Montague at least is is I would go into a press. Um, Whitehall has some good ball handlers, but I think they're limited in that section. We want to, you want to get them tired out, you want to get them get them moving. Um, and start making them make some turnovers. And, and I think if Montague runs some sort of man press or, or, or zone press, um, that can force Whitehall to, to put the ball on the ground and to move and, and to, to get tired. Now, if you run a press breaker right, that doesn't really happen all that much. But I think that Montague can kind of get them in a little bit of a, a, a panicky state if they, if they run a, a man or a zone press. Certainly. We're about uh, 30 seconds away from tip-off here. Student sections are starting to fill in. And we're gonna be ready for some starting lineups uh, here in a minute. Be right back right after the national anthem. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, and athletes, welcome to today's contest between the White House Vikings and the Montague Wildcats. It is the mission of Montague Area Public Schools to educate and inspire all students to become motivated, articulate, productive, and successful citizens for today, tomorrow, and forever. Montague High School, along with the West Michigan Conference, takes a position to practice good sportsmanship is essential for the complete education of our students. Respect, fairness, courtesy, graceful acceptance of the results are all characteristics of good sport. With that in mind, we ask all fans to refrain from booing, harassment of players or officials, and any conduct showing disrespect to our opponents. Win with character and lose with dignity. Ladies and gentlemen, the privilege of this event is made possible by those who have fought and continue to fight for the freedoms we enjoy. Let us now honor and respect their efforts and our country. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. All veterans, we encourage you to render the appropriate salute Everyone able, please stand at your attention, placing your hand over your heart as we proudly sing our national anthem.
we're about to get started here in, in this uh, conference rivalry matchup. Um, Montague v. Whitehall, the, uh, the battle for the bridge, as some might call it. Um, and, and we're getting starting lineups right now. It uh, looks like right now for Whitehall, they're going uh, a little bit taller. They got number 10, uh, or yeah, number 10, Annika Dempsey. Uh, it looks like at the one. Haley Carnes at the two. And uh, now we're Montague Number a senior, number three. Lucy Zanton at the three. Pearson. Number 21, Autumn a Ferris senior, at the at the five. Uh, man, number five. Yes. And number two, three, a Lexi Daggett senior, at the ten, four. And for Montague, um, junior, they're going number, number three, 11, Emma Peterson Osborne. at the one. Number five, Haley Schwartz at the two. Number 10, Britta Johnson at the three. Number 11, Kendall Osborne at the four. And number 32, Raylan Boltzmann at the five. And here we go. This is gonna be a good one, Connor. We've got a packed gym and two schools who are the biggest of rivals. Whitehall wins the tip off. Lucy Zamager at the half court. Haley Schwartz and Annika Dempsey fighting over it right now. It looks like it's a jump ball. A jump and that ball will go to. Five seconds into this game. It's going to be a physical one. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's going to go to Montague. Little discussion between the refs. And yeah, it looks like it's going to Montague. Kendall Osborne, looks like she's taking the point guard duties for this game. Bringing it up, guarded out wide. Looks like Whitehall's running a zone. Kicks it to Braylon Boltzma. Kicks it over to on the right side to Emma Peterson. Looking for somebody. Haley Schwartz with the ball now. Kicks it over to Kendall Osborne and she shoots. And she's one for one on the night. Three-pointer by number 11, Kendall Osborne. That's one way to start off, Connor. Yeah, Montague uh, going into a press right away. Looks like we got a foul on number three, Emma Peterson, her first, team's first. This is two times now that Whitehall's having some difficulty breaking this Montague press already. Yep. Haley Carnes bringing the ball down, looking for somebody. Kicks it over to the to Annika Dempsey. Lucy J Zamagin with the, the cut. Little bit of a, a hit there on the layup, misses it. Foul on Whitehall, number 21. Foul on the number 21. Her first, team's first. Montague with the ball now. Kendall Osborne bringing it back down the court again. Whitehall in their 2-3 zone. Looking to stop the shooters. Kicks it over to number 10, Britta Johnson. Over to the corner to Braylon. Back to Kendall in the corner. She trips. It's a scramble. Gives it to number three, Lucy Zamagin. Going up the court on the right side. Kicks it over to number 23. It looks like Kendall Osborne is still down on the other side of the floor. This is not a good sign if you're a Wildcat fan. Not sure what she hurt. Looks like her knee, maybe. Doesn't look like she's wincing too much. She went down pretty hard. Hopefully it's just a little bit of a stinger hitting her knee on the floor. Yeah, that hurts. I've had that happen before. So far it's 3-0, Montague up. Well, 
both coaches now are using this time to draw up some plays. For a while, I'd suggest drawing up something to break that press. Yeah, that press is definitely a killer there. Um, tough to beat. Montague's playing athletic and, and out wide. I do like the zone from uh, Whitehall so far. Um, I mean, it did come to hurt him. I, I mean, exactly what I was saying at the beginning of the game, or before the game, I mean, where um, if they get hot from the three-point line, it's going to be hard to stop in a zone like that. Looks like it's a knee. And Kendall's back up and walking, and uh, that's what you want to see, folks. Looks like it's her left knee. In for Kendall, we have Ella King, number 2-4. Knees are scary. I mean, I, I know you have knee problems. and Tell me about it, Connor. <laughs> Would you have both knees replaced? Not uh, replaced, but repaired. I'm but not quite repaired. that old yet. Oh. Uh, a couple of meniscus repairs on my right knee. Ball into number number one, Haley Carnes. Looking for somebody. Number 23 cuts back door, looks for a layup. Emma Peterson with the steal. She pushing the ball up the floor. Out on the fast break, guarded heavily by Annika Dempsey, double teamed by 2-3, and, and number 10 gets a foul. I don't know about that one there, Connor. That yeah, like that a one was, to me. yep. Clean trap as well, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call a foul there, but, but the ref had a much better angle on it than I did. Perhaps they're trying to set the tone for tonight and limit the physicality a little bit. Braylon Baltimore receives the ball, kicks it over to Ella King. Top of the key, she takes it, goes for a layup, gets a jump ball. Looks like it's going to be Whitehall's ball. Montague back in the press. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two press. Annika Dempsey with, with the layup. Gets fouled. Looks like the foul is on... Number 2-4, I think. Number 10 with the body. Her first, team second. Number 10, Annika Dempsey, shooting for the Vikings. Annika Dempsey with her first of two. Misses the first. This is what we were talking about earlier, Connor. It's very important to knock these down at the charity strip. Mm -hmm. the Definitely. Now she goes up for a second. And she misses that as well, but there is a lane violation on Whitehall number three, Lucy Zamagin. Audi, one more. Emma Peterson looking like she's going to take over the, the ball handling duties while Kendall's out. Um, looks like in Mo Montague's in a five out formation here. Braylon Baltimore with the ball at the top, passes over to Haley Schwartz. Haley makes a spin move. Looks like it's a travel. Turnover Montague. And I mean, as we said, turnovers are going to be key here. Montague back in their 1-2-2 one, one, two, two press, looking for a trap on the, on the right side. Whitehall doing good, kicks it over to, to the into the middle. Autumn Ferris with the shot from the corner. It, it drops. Monty looking to push the ball up the floor. Emma Peterson looking looking for the screen. Gets the screen from Ailey Schwartz, takes one crossover. Shot from Montague in the corner. No air, no air, all air on that one, my bad. Looks like we got another jump ball. It's gonna go to Montague this time. Checking in for the Wildcats, number 33. Addison Prang. Montague looking like they're running a box set. Gives it over to Haley Schwartz, she fakes, goes middle. Gives it to Ella King, she goes left. Gets the ball tipped. Looks like it's out last, touched last by Annika Dempsey, number 10. 
And I think the zone here, Connor, is starting to take effect for Whitehall. You're yeah. seeing Montague get a little bit sloppy with the ball here. Whitehall with stretching that zone all the way out to about the white line. Deep shot from Emma Peterson, rebounded by Haley Schwartz, number five. She kicks it over to Emma Peterson. She's got room to go. She goes up to the left, gets fouled. And as a small guard, that's that's exactly what you want to do is go up get, and, and try to get that foul. And as we see there, Emma Peterson does. She shoot, is shooting her first of two. It's definitely going to be important to get to the basket with Kendall out of the game right now. Yep, definitely. She hits no rim on the first, shooting her second. We have we have a sub for number five, Haley Schwartz. Number two, three, Lauren Smith comes in. Shooting her second. Missed that one also. Montague in the press again. Number one, Haley Carnes. Britta Johnson from behind. Doesn't get the steal. Annika Dempsey with the shot. Misses it. Looks like it's outlast on Montague, number 2-4. And it looks, look like, it's looking like Whitehall is starting to figure out its way through this press for Montague. Whitehall in a stack set. Back in the corner to Annika. And she hits that. Emma Peterson bringing the ball back down the court. Three points for the Vikings, striker 10, Annika Dempsey. Whitehall stretching this zone out. Screen by Addison Pranger at the high screen. Another foul. Looks like Emma Peterson hit her head on the floor on that one. That would be two big injuries for Montague right at the beginning. She shakes it up and gets right back up though, Connor. Emma Peterson shooting her first of two. She's 0 for 2 so far. Makes the first. Shooting her second. Hits the second. Montague back in the press. Ball over to number one, Haley Carnes. Ashley Tembring put the ball. Now three on her. She gets fouled. I think those number free throws inspired Montague's defense a little Haley bit there, Schwartz, Connor. Yep. The number five. Back up now. Number five, Haley Schwartz coming in for number 10, Britta Johnson. Looks like Whitehall's pushing all five, four up to try and counter this Montague press. Looks like Haley Schwartz tipped it out of Annika Dempsey's hands. Looks like it's going to be Whitehall's ball. Ball into Haley Carnes. Tipped again by Addison Pranger. Whitehall's ball again on the side. Haley Carnes bringing the ball down the right side. Looking to get a layup. Gets it tipped. Tips it to number 2-3. Annika Dempsey standing there with the ball. Looking for what to do. Crosses over, tries to go middle. Montague running a zone now as well. Haley Carnes tipped away by number number three, Emma Peterson, out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be Montague's ball. Yep. And Montague right now, Connor, is doing a very good job of staying low and playing great defense without causing fouls. Definitely. Emma Peterson bringing the ball down the floor. Whitehall now still in their 2-3, stretching it way out. Haley Schwartz with the ball. Gets fouled, looking to shoot another two. I think right now the biggest thing for Montague with Kendall Osborne out is uh, is just space in the floor. They're having trouble spacing the floor with, they're not shooting as much and they're trying trying to get to the rack and that's that's causing a little bit of congestion in the lane and especially against the zone, that's just, that's not gonna work very well. Certainly, Haley, there's a lot of traffic in the paint right now. Haley Schwartz missing her first of two. Shooting her 
Shooting her second. Makes that one. Montague back in the press. Annika Dempsey bringing the ball down the left side. Looks like she's going middle. Looking for a cutter. Misses that. Gets tipped off. Looks like it's a foul on number five for Whitehall. Montague's ball. That was a great crossover there for number 10, Annika Dempsey. Yeah, just didn't get, didn't get back to the middle to get that layup off. Emma Peterson bringing the ball down. Whitehall still stretching this zone out. Looks like it's working so far. Emma Peterson trying to get into the, to the lane. Whitehall is looking to run into some foul trouble in the second, or this first quarter. Um, how do you think that could sway this game? Well, it's certainly a huge advantage for Montague. Whitehall's sitting at seven fouls already with 3.18 left in the first quarter. Yep. Emma Peterson shooting her first of two. Makes that. She's three for five now. Number four, Marissa Strandberg checking in for number 11. Emma Peterson misses her second of two. Looks like she's trapped on the corner. Needing help, looking for somebody. Gets it to J Lauren Smith. Lauren gets fouled. And it looks like she's going to go to the charity stripe. Call for the Vikings, number four, Marissa Strandberg. Looks like the foul is on number four, Marissa Strandberg. Lauren Smith shooting for the Wildcats. Lauren Smith shooting her first of two. Whitehall student section being pretty loud, trying to cause some distractions here. And it appears it's worked as Montague's missed their first free throw. Lauren Smith misses her first. Doesn't look like she's gonna get her second. Looks like Whitehall's gonna get the ball back. Montague turning into a man press now. Let's the ball get in. Gives Number four gives it back to number 10. She brings the ball up the court. Green on the left side. Kicks it over to number two, three. She shoots from deep. Gets no rim on that one. Ella King looking for to give it to somebody. Yes, Ashley Tembring steals it. <laughs> Looks like Ashley got fouled. Foul on number two, four, oh, Ella King. It's nice Ella to see King. Whitehall create some pressure in the backcourt there, Connor. Yep. Number 14. Adeline Peterson checking in for it. Number two for Ella King. Whitehall in a stack set again. Montague with the steal. Lauren Smith with it. She's looking up the court. Looks, stops. Emma Peterson looking to set it up. Steal by number 10, Annika Dempsey. Montague gets it back. She takes it to the lane, gets fouled. Looks like she's going to the line again. And again, Montague's already in the double bonus. Or no, I think both teams have nine fouls already. Um, I can't see Montague's right now, but um, so far it's seven to five, Montague up. And I think that lead is primarily because of the, the fouls and, and the shooting from the charity stripe so far. Certainly. Um, if you're Whitehall, you got to do a better job at moving your feet in the paint. See a lot of the Whitehall team will crash in. Uh, yep. Then they don't move their feet. They don't move their feet much. They're getting a lot of body when these Montague girls go up the layups. Yep. Haley Schwartz misses both of her two. Hits no rim on the second one. Looks like it's going to be Whitehall's ball. Number two, three coming down the court. Looks like she went middle. Lauren Smith picking her up. Tipped by number 33, Addison Pranger. Kicks it over to Emma Peterson. She's going to slow it down. Gives it over to number five, Haley Schwartz at the top of the key. She kicks it over to number 33, Addison Pranger. She shoots it from deep. Montague gets their own rebound. Number three trapped. Haley Schwartz gets fouled by number three, Lucy Zamagin. 
Whitehall's 10th. Lucy Zamagin, 2nd. Haley Schwartz Haley goes to the line. Shoot shooting 2 because they're in the double bonus. Uh, so far, what do you think Montague and Whitehall can both do better? Whitehall, it's certainly foul less, Connor. Mm -hmm. um, I think a timeout um, is necessary to calm everybody's nerves down. Mm -hmm. um, however, Montague's already in the double bonus, so I'm not sure if that'll help a whole lot when you're not out. Definitely, and it's not like the NBA where, where the, the, the fouls reset every every half, or every every quarter, my bad. Exactly. Uh, so Montague's going to have a lot of a lot of attempts from the free throw line uh, for the next nine and a half minutes. Yep. Haley Schwartz missed her first, misses her second. She's 0 for 4 on the night. Trailed heavily by Lauren Smith. She tips it away. Looks like it's going to be Whitehall's ball on the sideline, right next to the Montague student section. Number 10 kicks it to number 1. Carnez looking for the cutter. Not able to get it. Autumn Ferris with the, the screen. Zamagin over to Dempsey. She's trying to get to the rack. Gets fouled on the, on the shot. Looks like she was shoved. Looks like they're gonna keep this one on the floor, actually. No, Dempsey kicks it over to Strandberg. Strandberg in the corner looking for something. Backs, backs number 14 down. Tries to go for the reverse. It hits the top of the, the bottom of the backboard, my bad. And it looks like it's gonna be Montague's ball. And for Whitehall, you'd like to see Annika start putting up a few shots here, Connor. Definitely. Or, or better, more quality shots, I would say. Certainly. Peterson coming down the left side. Get Dempsey getting double screened at the top. She tips it. She gets fouled by number three, Emma Peterson. Kendall Osborne looks like she's returned to the bench. Also the Wildcats number three, Emma Peterson. That is certainly good news if you're a Wildcats fan. Definitely. Looks like Whitehall's in a box formation. Timeout by Montague. Timeout for the Wildcats. Looks like it's going to be a, I think it's a 30 second timeout. Uh, so far, what do you think Montague can, or Montague specifically can do better than we already talked about? The Montague FFA is having a big sale. I think they just got to keep the pressure on them, Connor. I think they're doing a fantastic job getting to the hoop um, and playing defense and causing turnovers. I think the one thing they could improve on is maybe uh, converting from the free throw line a bit more. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I think Haley Schwartz so far, she's gotten to the line twice, and I don't think she's made a free throw yet. Um, like we said at the beginning of the game, or before, my bad, um, getting to the line, and not only getting the line, but making shots, that can definitely impact the out, the, the, the end of a game when it's in, when it's in crunch time. Um, right now, I think Montague, with the amount of free throws they've, they've shot so far, it would be 15 to 5 currently. or And if you count that for Boyle, it'd probably be more like 15 to 10 or 15 to 7. Um, and I think that's that's a lot of a lot of points that you're leaving out there that you got to get back from the foul line. This definitely wouldn't be a, a two point game, Connor. Whitehall in a box set at half court. Strandberg with the ball out, kicks it to Carnes over. She brings it over onto the right side, looking to give it to somebody. Emma Pearson guarding heavily. Looks like Montague is still is in man to man. Ferris with the ball, looking to give it to somebody. Carnes misses the wide open Ferris. And Annika takes it in and draws a foul. She'll be going to the line for two. Foul on number two, three. Foul for the Vikings for 23. Lawrence Smith. Number 10, Annika Dempsey shooting for the Vikings. Number 10, Dempsey shooting for, for Whitehall here. She makes the first of two. Seven to six, Montague. Shooting her second. She misses. Off the back iron, Lauren Smith gets the ball. Looking to push it up the floor. Kicks it back to Peterson. 
Pearson looking to set something up. Montague in a high-low set. Emma Pearson gets to the rim. No foul there. Carnes with the ball. Kicks it over to Dempsey. Dempsey on the left side. Kicks it to Ferris. Ferris shoots from the corner. She's one for two now. Misses that. Schwartz with the ball up the middle of the court. Off the rebound. Looking to give it to a ball handler. Smith gets the ball. Turnover by Smith. Kicks it to Carnes. Carnes over to Dempsey. Dempsey for the layup. Misses the layup. Ferris with the rebound. Puts it back. That gives Whitehall the lead. 7-8 to eight in this first quarter as time runs out. What a finish for Whitehall to that quarter. Definitely, and that's something you want going into the second quarter, um, especially with uh, 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 Kendall Osborne out. That's, that's where most of your scoring production comes from. This is certainly uh, not, I think, what Wildcat fans expected to see tonight, Connor. Is, yeah, uh, definitely. Whitehall out to a one-point lead after the first quarter. And I think the big thing there is, is just that, that or uh, Kendall Osborne's been out and not able to play. I'm not sure exactly what her injury is. I, I'll, I'll be looking to get that at halftime. Um, but that's definitely limited scoring production for this, these Wildcats. Um, lo what uh, Kendall Osborne brings to them is just some floor spacing. Not only that, but her scoring output as well. Um, and if she's not out there, she's not able to do that. Um, I do like the way the Cats have been getting to the rim, and I think they need to continue to do that. Um, from Whitehall's side, what would you like to see a little bit more of? I'd like to see them continue the great defense they played in the last minute of that first quarter there. Uh, they started to move their feet in the paint a little bit um, and contest shots more yep. effectively. Yep. Um, I think it's important for these Wildcats to not get so panicky. It looks like when they get the ball, they, they want to get rid of it right away. And same for the Vikings as well. Um, but Montague more so. Um, and I think they need a ball handler to step up and just take that role. Um, Emma Peterson's the one who's been doing that so far, but it doesn't look like she wants the ball. Yet, just yet, and I, I'd like to see her do that a little bit more and continue to, to uh, make those plays. Certainly, and we're underway in the second quarter. Emma Pearson with the ball. Britta Johnson flashing the high post. Ella King flashing the high post as well. Three-pointer from, from Emma Peterson. Ferris kicks it up to Carnes. Carnes with the fast break, goes up on the layup, misses it, rebound by Johnson, foul by Dempsey. Looks and like that, her second. And that is not the foul you want to see uh, 90 feet away from the hoop there. Definitely. Just just a frustration foul, as you Return might call Britta it. Britta Johnson shooting for the Wildcats. Britta Johnson looking for her uh, fifth and sixth points right now. Or my bad. Her third and fourth points. She misses the first of two. So far, Montague not shooting well from the free throw line. If Montague lets this uh, double bonus get away from him in the first half, they're definitely going to regret that one. Definitely. Looks like it's out on Montague. Possibly. Refs conferring. Jump ball. Montague Whitehall's ball. Weird jump ball there. Looked like it was out on Whitehall, but I'm not sure. I couldn't see from over here, Connor. Pressure tight on Montague. Strandberg throws it off King's foot. Dempsey, ta Dempsey taking over the passing roll. She goes deep to Strandberg. Strandberg catches the ball, going looking for a layup. She misses. Ferris with the rebound, puts it up, foul. Whitehall is doing such a great job countering Connor. They're getting out in the break very well um, and putting up shots quickly. This is where if I was Montague, I'd start to look to maybe drop back to a half court press or, or maybe a, a, a three quarter court press just to keep that. I like the way that they're pressuring, but I think they definitely need to switch to switch it up. Ferris with her first, makes it. Whitehall is shooting much better than Montague so far in this game. Addison Pranger in for, for uh, number 10, Britta Johnson. Ferris on her second. She is two for two from the line so far. Seven to 10, Whitehall up with seven minutes, 30 seconds to go. Peterson bringing down the ball down the floor. Looking to get it to, to Baltimore. 
She kicks it over to, to Pearson with the dribble. No foul on that. Dempsey with the, the rebound. King hot on her trail. She's looking for the layup. Gets fouled before the shot. Looks like it's a foul on number 24, Ella King. There you have it again. Whitehall taking it out, uh, getting it up the floor quickly on a fast break and putting some pressure on that Montague press. Looks like it's going to be one and one. Both, both teams in the bonus, Montague in the double bonus. Dempsey makes her, her, her first. Looks like she's going to get a second. The bank is open on a Thursday, Connor. Definitely. How was that not, how was that not traveling every single time? Because that was easily one, two, three. Oh. That's why I was, I wanted to Shooting her second. Makes her second. Monty, you looking to get something started here. Pearson bringing it up. Looking to get it somewhere. At. Dribbles over to the right side. Pranger setting a screen on the, her left. Not sure what Montague's doing right now against this zone defense. Pearson kicks it over to King at the top of the key. King taking it up. She makes it. A little bit of a floater from the, from the middle of the paint. Ball to Karnas. She's pushing the ball. Looking to set something up. Strandberg on the right side. She takes it to her right. Over to Lucy. That is stripped away by number three, Emma Pearson. She's now trapped in the, in the bottom right, left corner. King with the ball, pushes it up to Pranger. Pranger looking to get it back to King. King fakes, goes up, drops down to, to Haley Schwartz. She kicks to Baltimore. She kicks back to King. King shoots it. Dempsey with the rebound. Great ball movement there by Montague. Unfortunately, they, wouldn't, they didn't get one to fall. Dempsey with the open three. She takes it. Off the front, Pearson with the rebound. Maggie with the deep pass to Braylon Baltimore. It goes over her head. Two subs. Looks like Adeline Peterson and Lauren Smith in for Braylon Baltimore and Addison Pranger. 14, Addie Peterson and 23, Lauren Smith. Check it in. Go out, Cats. Ella King out as well. Oh, never mind. Dempsey with the ball on the left side. Tipped by Lauren Smith. Lauren Smith goes up. Blocked by number 23. What a swat by Lexi Daggett there. Looks like Whitehall's in another box set. Jaden Ringler in for Lucy Zamagin for Whitehall. Montague in another box set. Kicks it out to, to Schwartz. Schwartz over to Smith. Ball is fumbled. Back to Schwartz. Schwartz looking to shoot. Schwartz back to the to the right side. Looking to swing it over to the left to, to Peterson. Back to her sister. Euro step. And she makes the Euro step layup on the left side or right side, my bad. What a bucket there. Definitely great, great step. Great. Something you don't see often, the Euro step. Dempsey over to Carnes. Karnas pushing up the floor, put, puts it to Tembrink. Tembrink with the layup. Broke the press beautifully there. Montague calls a timeout, and that's a, that's a much needed timeout for Montague there. Definitely. Uh, you'd like to see him regroup on offense a little bit, Connor. It looks like they were starting to get uh, a bit bored and forcing some passes uh, yep. against this frustrating Whitehall defense. Yep. Thaler not happy. Um, I, would I would definitely say Montague's energy is not, not at, at the level it needs to be right now. They look a little down. Um, and, and they need to get something going here. Well, that's what timeouts are for. Hopefully they can do that. Yep. Uh, what do you think Whitehall's done really good so far in this game? Um, I think they're just focusing well at the free throw line. Uh, they're making shots, and uh, they're really holding down the fort on defense despite all these fouls early on. Definitely. Looks like it's Montague's ball coming out. Scores 11 to 14. Whitehall up. 
Lauren Smith to receive the ball, kicks it back to Peterson. Peterson bringing the ball down the court. She shoots from deep, gets no rim. Scramble for the ball, Schwartz has it. Looks like it's gonna be a jump ball, Montague ball. And I think after a timeout like that, Connor, you've gotta come up with uh, something better than a volleyball line three-pointer right away. Definitely, even though I would shoot it. Smith shoots it from the three. Peterson with the save, but it goes to Dempsey. Dempsey up the left side of the court. Looking for a layup, doesn't get it. Passes over to Carnes, she shoots from the corner. Peterson with the rebound. Great hustle by Peterson there. Peterson bringing it down the court. Looking to push it over to the right side of the floor. She does, gives it to Smith. Smith brings it back to the middle, kicks it over to the left side to the other Peterson, to, to Baltimore in the corner. Baltimore bringing it up to the middle. Over to Peterson. Peterson looking to set something up. Smith screening for her. She's in the corner, she's trapped now. We got a foul on Dempsey, it looks like it'll be her third. And let's see if Montague will be able to convert from the free throw line this time. Peterson looks like she's been 50%, uh, uh, I would say around, roughly, um, from the free throw line so far. And this, these are two important free throws to get get something going in this, this uh, the, the halfway through this second quarter. Shooting her first. She makes that. Two point difference. Makes her second. One point difference with four minutes to go. Pearson with the steal. Looks like she's got some energy. Great pass by Peterson, up and an and one from Smith. Two points for the Wildcats. Let's see if she converts. That was a great pass by Peterson. Great steal, great hustle. Just an all around great play there, Connor. Very timely for Montague. It's nice to see them get going on defense and pick that energy up a little bit. That must be what they talked about during the timeout. Definitely. Smith misses the and one. Peterson with the rebound. Passes over to Smith. Smith fakes the shot. Over to Peterson. Back to the other Peterson on the right side. She takes one dribble. Pulls it back out. Screen, screen by Boltima. Brings it over to the left side. Over to Smith. Back over to Peterson. She, she gets by the defender. Gets fouled. Looked like a little bit of a hard foul. She'll be going to the line. I would say she's just getting beat up this game. Um, and, and I admire that, sacrificing your body for the team, trying to get fouls, that, that's a, a great teammate quality there. It definitely is. Uh, let's just hope she can convert from the free throw line this time. One point difference. Peterson on her first, misses the first. Shooting her second. Misses her second right off the front. Gets the steal. We got a jump ball. Looks like it's going to be a Whitehall's ball. Montague really forcing a lot of pressure on these missed free throws. Definitely. I like the energy that they brought out of that timeout. That's exactly what they needed. Um, putting a lot of pressure on this Whitehall team. Rindler with the pass over to Tembrink. A little too high, Tembrink loses the ball, goes out of bounds, looks like it's gonna be Montague's ball. Montague student section with the Butterfingers chant. Peterson bringing the ball up the floor. Over to Schwartz. With the layup, misses it. Rindler. Everybody's on the floor. Looks like we'll have another jump ball to be Montague, Montague ball this time. Two subs for, for Whitehall. Number three, Lucy Zamagen in for Ashley Tembrink, and number 21 in for number 22, Taylor Ottinger. You'd like to see Whitehall get uh, 
Autumn Ferris the ball a little bit. She's been a, she's been a very effective jump shooter so far early on. Definitely. Montague in a box set. Pranger in for Peterson. Over to Boltima. Boltima looking. Over to Smith. Smith with the jump with the layup. Rebound Montague. Smith with the second rebound. Kicks it over to Peterson. Peterson looking to calm it down. Screen by Pranger up top. Pranger with another screen up top. Foul on number 23, Lexi Daggett. Foul, I'm not sure what the foul was. Baltimore will shoot two. Shooting her first. Makes it. No rim on that one. Shooting her second. Makes her second. Some timely shot. free throws there. Definitely. Karna's over on the right side, looking to push the ball up the floor. Not stopped yet. Throws up a shot. Zamagin with the rebound. Kicks it over to Daggett. Screen by Ferris. Daggett picks up her dribble. Ball over to Zamagin. Kicks it down to Ring, Ring, Ringler. Couldn't find that one in my brain. She gets fouled, looks like she's gonna shoot two. Foul on number 23, Foul Lauren on Smith. 23, Lauren Smith. It's nice to see Whitehall get to the line here. They uh, stop putting pressure on Whitehall uh, and Montague's defense there for a minute. Yep. She misses the first. Ringler with none in the game so far. Looking to get her first right here. Shooting her second. And she makes that. Whitehall shooting much better than Montague so far in this game. Pearson bringing the ball up the floor. Looking to slow it down a little bit. Whitehall more in a 1-1-3 than a 2-3 than a zone. Stretching it out a little bit. Pearson over to Pranger. Pranger back to Peterson. Pranger with the screen. Pearson over to Schwartz. Schwartz looking. She takes two dribbles to the right. Back to Peterson. Peterson over to Sh Smith. Smith with the shot. Tries to bank it in. It's no good. Over to Ferris. Ferris back to Karnas. Karnas trying to go all the way. Zamagin with the ball now. Kicks it over to Karnas in the corner. Karnas with the layup. Gets fouled. Gets the and one. What a great job passing up the three there. Because uh, you knew you could get a better look. Definitely. She's shooting her first of her hand one shots. Number two, four, Ella King coming in for number five, Haley Schwartz. Looks like Haley Schwartz is in a little bit of foul trouble with three in this first half so far. Tied game. Karnas misses. Pranger with the rebound. Over to Smith. Back to Peterson. Peterson bringing the ball up the floor. Screen by Pranger. Passed off to, to King. King looking to give it to somebody. King almost turns the ball over. Down to, down to Boltima. Boltima goes up, gets blocked by Ferris. Looks like it's going to be Montague Ball out on Ferris. Montague looks a little bit tired there, Connor. They have slowed things down quite a bit. Definitely. Montague in the box set. Over to King. King shoots it from the corner. Tries to bank it in from the corner. Rebound, Boltima. Over to Smith. Looking to set something up. Over to Peterson. Peterson back up to the middle. She shoots from deep. I don't know if I like that shot. Pranger with the, the hustle rebound. Peterson goes to take it. Looks like she got fouled, but no call. She gets up, slow. Daggett with the, bringing the ball up the floor. Over to Karnas. 
Karnas to Zamagin. Zamagin up, gets the, gets the easy bucket. Great ball movement by Whitehall. Pearson bringing it up the floor. 30 seconds left. King over in the, on the right side. Pearson with the fumble. Pearson bringing up the left side, trying to get something. No call. Boltima tips it down. Looks like it's going to be a foul on Peterson. I That's a jump ball. Jump ball. My bad. Montague is just getting beat up in the paint, Connor. Definitely. I think that's why they're forcing up some of these threes. Over to Carnes, bringing down the ball on the left floor, pressured heavily by King. Back to the middle. Looks like Montague went back to a man set. Gets screened by Ferris. Jump ball. Montague ball. Looks like it's Whitehall's ball, actually. My bad. Heavy pressure on Karnas. She's got two seconds to shoot. Daggett with the shot. Gets a foul. Looks like she's going to the line. What a great play there by Daggett to yep. get that shot off before the buzzer went off. Definitely. And I think Montague and Whitehall here just have to find a way to stop fouling so much and get a, ball, a shot off. Thaler does not look happy. And Kendall Osmond does not look like she's doing very well. Daggett shooting. Misses her, misses her first and second, it looks like. And they'll be going to the locker room for halftime. What do you think these teams need to do better in the second half? I think if you're Montague, you got to recover here a little bit. Yep. You had a lot of free throw attempts um, and weren't able to come away with this the lead the at halftime. Yep. Um, you got to be able to flush that away yep. and get back to it and come out with some energy. Uh, if you're Whitehall, um, I think you're doing a great job countering. Um, I'd like to see you get up, get some more shots up. It seems a uh, too, few too many turnovers um, and some, some forced shots. You'd like to see him draw something up on offense to get some open looks. Definitely. All right, and we're going to go to our halftime break. We'll be back with you right before the half.
And Catchmark Sportsnet uh, back with you, providing this live stream between Montague and Whitehall varsity girls basketball. Whitehall has a, a two-point lead at the half. Um, not something we expected coming into this game, Connor. Definitely. Uh, and just a little bit up of an update on Kendall. Looks like she's going to be out for the rest of this game. Like we said, a, a left knee problem. Um, and, and that's about as far as we'll, we'll go So right now. That's certainly not what you want to hear. Um, but we wish her the best. Yep. Johnson passing the ball, tipped by Dempsey. Over to Schwartz. Schwartz looking to kick it back out. Kicks it over to Peterson. Peterson looking to take it in the lane. Gets fouled. That's the first of the half. Not what you want to do if you're Whitehall here. Uh, you, want to, you want to replicate that good defense you were playing at the end of the yep. first half. Mm -hmm. Three. Uh, especially, you you know fouling was the issue last half, um, and you're already getting a foul 21 seconds in. Brito over to, to Peterson. Peterson looking to take a floater. She Two makes the floater. Three. Looks like Montague's going to drop Peterson. back to about a three-quarter court press. Peterson out out deep on, on Karnas. Dempsey crossing the court. Karnas over to Dempsey. Looks like... Karnas traveled on that pass. Took one too many steps. And that uh, man press that Montague came out in, that's what that does is that puts just enough pressure on the offense uh, and can cause them to make some mistakes. Yep. Schwartz with the ball, looking to get a layup. Gets fouled by, by Ferris. Looks like she's going to go to the line. Two fouls already by Whitehall in the first 47 seconds. Foul for the Vikings, number 21, Autumn Ferris. Like we were talking about earlier, Whitehall's got to start moving their feet in the paint um, and not just standing there with their hands up. Definitely. Looks like Schwartz missed the first. Not having a great shooting night from the charity stripe. She's shooting her second. Makes her second. Dempsey with the ball on the left side. Little fancy dribble moves. She goes for the layup, misses it. Ferris with the rebound, misses that as well. Schwartz with the rebound. Pearson up the court. Peterson Slows definitely looks a little bit more energized uh, coming out to start the second half. Definitely. Over to the right, screen from Pranger. Looking to get something going. Doesn't get fouled, but go falls hard. Schwartz with the ball over on the left side, stripped by Karnas. Karnas dives on it. Looks like it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to be a Whitehall ball. And just a little over a minute in, Montague's already reclaimed this lead. Uh, that's what you want to see if you're a Wildcats fan. Uh, they came out with a lot of energy here to start the second half. Definitely. Johnson up tight on, on Dempsey. Dempsey trying to get fancy. Looks like it's a charge. Offensive foul. Addison Pranger with the taking that foul. She did exactly what you need to do as a defender when you have a guard coming hot. Just stand there and take it and let and, and hopefully get that charge rather than the blocking foul. I agree. I think she might have been a little bit far under the hoop though, don't you think, Connor? Possibly. Uh, double sub for Whitehall. Looks like Jaden Ringler, Ringler in for uh, Lucy Zamagin and Annika Dempsey uh, out for uh, Ashley Tembrink. Over to Johnson. Johnson to Schwartz, Schwartz fakes, looking to get it down low, Ain't not able to. Tip by Ferris, Pearson grabs it, Pearson at the top of the key, over to Johnson, Johnson looking to shoot, she does, off the right side, Schwartz with the heavy rebound, puts it up and makes it. Monty with the three point lead now, man press. A lot of press. contact on that layup there, great job be able to finish that. Yep. Odd pass, Ringler with the rebound. She puts it up, misses the layup. Lots of pressure from Whitehall. Peterson bringing the ball down the court. Looks very calm and collected. Montague out to a nice little 5-0 run here to start the third quarter. Definitely. Pearson, look to attack. Bringing it back up. Over to, looking at Johnson, doesn't. Kicks it to Johnson. Johnson takes one dribble, kicks it to Schwartz. Schwartz looking to attack. 
Not able to. Pearson from deep. Doesn't hit. Looks like it was out on Schwartz. That was a deep three. I don't necessarily like that shot, but if that's all you're getting right now, I guess you have to take it. It very nearly went in. I think one. I think the next one's going to go. Definitely. Uh, number three, Lucy Zamagin in for uh, number 23, Lexi Daggett. Ten bring up the floor, looking to get a layup. Kicks it over to Ferris. Ferris with the jumper from the left side or right side. Foul on Tembring. That was Tembring's all third. ball. You can see Tembring's mouth. Tembring's third, team's fourth. Pearson bringing it up the court, conferring with her teammate. Bringing up the right side. Looking to space the floor. Get the zone stretched out a little bit. Taking it to the, taking it to the jump ball. Looks like it's gonna be Montague's ball. Great block by Ferris. Great D there too to stand straight up. Keep your hands outstretched. Montague in a box set, looking to get it out. Kicks it over to Peterson. Peterson fakes, goes up, gets fouled. Looks like it's gonna be Ringler on the foul. Number 11 with her third. Pearson shooting two. Or number, my bad, number five, Ashley Tembring on the foul. Whitehall is really liking to reach in a lot here, Connor. You'd like to see them move their feet and get in position a little bit more. Definitely. Tembring's fourth, team's fifth. Peterson makes her first of two. Tembring with the sub. Versus Strandberg. Pearson with her second. She hits. Montague off to a nice 7-0 uh, run right at the beginning of this game. Ball to Ferris in the middle of the court. She looks to dribble. Reach for reach on Baltimore. Some fans not happy about that. If Montague keeps, keeps hitting their free throws like this and Whitehall keeps following, this one could get lopsided pretty quickly. Definitely. Ultima's first, team's first. Ball to Karnas. Karnas up the floor looking to get it to Ringler. Not able to, drops it off to Ferris at the high post. Ferris travels, it's gonna be Montague's ball. Peterson with the ball. Back to Peterson, over to Johnson. Over, over Boltima's head. Back down to Boltima. Boltima looking to put it up. Not able to. Over to Pearson. Pearson looking to attack. She does. Foul. I think it's going to be on number 11. She's going to the line again. I think she's been at the line about 15 times today. Tonight, my bad. Ringler's third. Team sixth. Almost in the bonus for Montague. And if you're a Whitehall fan here, you'll notice the absence of uh, number 10, Annika Dempsey. I think that's a big reason why they're struggling to get the ball um, up the floor and get it, get good shots off of that. Definitely. Pearson makes her first of two. Daggett in for number 11, Jaden Ringler. Pearson lining up to shoot her second. She misses her second. Pranger with Peterson's rebound. Over to Schwartz. Schwartz looking to, to find Boltima in the post. Not able to. Zamagin over to, stolen by Pranger. Over to Schwartz. Schwartz over to Peterson. Peterson looking to calm it down. Peterson over to Schwartz. Schwartz to Pranger. Pranger back to Peterson. Peterson shoots a deep three. Off the right iron. Pranger with the rebound. Pranger over to Schwartz, Schwartz over to Pearson, kicks it over to, to Johnson. Johnson over to over to Baltimore, tipped by Ferris. I think it's gonna be off number four, Marissa Stramberg. It looks like I was wrong there about Peterson's next three following, Connor. Definitely. Number 
Coach Milliron wants a timeout. He gets it full timeout. That's something you need to stop this uh, this run that Montague's got going. They've got a lot of energy coming out in this this uh, second half so far, and they just got to keep that rolling. I think. I think this timeout is a little bit overdue here, Connor. Uh, Montague's been putting the pressure on, getting the free throw line, and Whitehall hasn't been able to get anything going. Definitely, uh, Montague with a uh, what what is that seven point run so far, um, and I would say a majority of it's out of free throws actually. Um, Emma Peterson's made three free throws already in this this uh, was it three or three or five? Maybe five. One of the two. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, already in this first uh, this first qu quarter of the second half, so third quarter. Um, what do you think Whitehall needs to change to take back the lead that they had going into the, the halftime? I think they need to be a little bit more confident hand handling the ball. Um, I'm not sure why number ten isn't in right now, but she does a majority of their ball handling. Um, and it's, it's showing that Whitehall is struggling uh, with her absence on the court. Definitely. Um, I think part of the reason she's not in right now, I think she's in a little bit of foul trouble, and they want to save her for that fourth quarter, which is a, is a smart play, but I think you got to get her in, especially when you're having trouble getting the ball up and down the court like Whitehall is right now. If the game's not close going into the fourth, I don't think there's going to be much point to holding her out here. Definitely. Montague in a box set, or a line set, I apologize. Pranger taking the ball out. Schwartz over to the corner. Schwartz with the ball. Kicks it over to the top to Johnson. Johnson over to Peterson. Peterson comes back to the top. Back to Schwartz. Schwartz with the ball, dribbling up top. Over to Johnson in the corner. Johnson to Pranger. Pranger wide open. She puts it up, gets tipped by Ferris. Or Daggett, my bad. Looks like it's out on Whitehall. Student section definitely talking some trash over there on the, on the sideline when that ball went out. Stack set for Montague on the sideline. Johnson to receive it. She takes it. Pranger with the three, and she hits it. I knew that one was going in before it ever, ever got to the hoop. You called it, Connor. That thing was still coming out of her hands. Great three by Pranger. Montague in a, in a man, man's half court set right now. Somehow that went in off the top of the backboard. I don't know what just happened there. I thought that was out of bounds, but looks like it tipped in off there. Like I said, Connor, the bank is open on a Thursday. Can you count that as the bank, though? The top of the bank, perhaps. Schwartz with the layup. Looks like it's it's stripped away by Strandberg. Str Strandberg over to Daggett. Daggett over to Karnas. Karnas with the easy layup. Great fast break. That's the end of the run. Peterson over to Schwartz. Schwartz back up to the top of the key. Schwartz looking to pass it somewhere. Not sure where that was going. Schwartz over to Ferris. Ferris to Zamadin. Stolen by Johnson. Johnson goes up. Gets fouled by Ferris. And she's going to go to the charity stripe. Way to respond by Montague. Definitely. That's, that's uh, Ferris's fourth foul. Team seventh. Johnson with the bank. Free throw is good. Smith in for Schwartz. Tembrink in for Ferris. You're swapping four fouls for four fouls in the Tembrink-Ferris uh, exchange there. Johnson on her second. She misses it. Baltimore with the rebound. Looks like it's going to be a jump ball. And that's going to go to Whitehall. Six point difference uh, in this third quarter with about one minute, 54 seconds left. Montague back in the man, man uh, press. Dropping it back, looking to trap in the corner. They get the trap, Johnson it, Carnes. Looks like it's gonna be a timeout, Whitehall. Not one you wanna take, but one you have to. Certainly, and uh, Whitehall's foul trouble starting to starting to affect him here a bit. Definitely, you have uh, uh, two people on the court right now with three and four fouls, um, and and one on the bench with four, and another one with probably three. Going into the fourth quarter, you have three starters with three plus fouls. That's not a situation you want to be in. Um, 
especially in a close game like this where it's six point difference. Um, you want to look at getting getting a few more uh, people into a rotation maybe in this third quarter and try and get some, some of those fouls dispersed and, and save your, your players for the four, for that eventual fourth quarter that's coming up in about a minute and three quarters. Certainly. You got to do one of two things here. You got to have uh, you got to have some people on Whitehall step it up and get the score a little bit closer. Montague with the six point lead right now. Um, or you've got to trust your starters out there uh, that they won't they won't commit any more fouls. Uh, but yep. I'm not sure that's the the route I'd go right now because Whitehall is really um, reaching quite a bit on just about everything. Yep. Rebound by Zamagin. Zamagin over to Daggett. Daggett over to Karnas. Karnas shoots the deep three. Daggett with the rebound. She puts up the layup. Misses the layup. Rebound by Pranger. Over to Peterson. Peterson bringing up the ball now. I like the slowdown for Montague here. That's definitely the way to go for in this little bit of a chaotic game. Pearson over to the right. Looking to get a screen by Pranger. She does. Over to Smith. Smith over to Johnson. Johnson down into the post of Voltima. Stripped away by, by Strandberg. Strandberg to Daggett. Everybody's Fumble. on the floor right now. Looks like it's going to be a foul on Zamagin. Pearson at the line for about the 25th time this game. And we're going to have a sub. Fourth foul on Lucy Zamagin and just another player that, that's one foul away from being out of this game. I definitely like the way Montague's responded um, to being down in the first half. Certainly, they've been able to limit Whitehall to four points um, while scoring 12 of their own. And uh, Whitehall's, Whitehall's uh, struggles defending Montague in the paint is starting to really show through uh, with Montague hitting a lot of free throws. Montague hitting uh, another free throw, Emma Pearson hitting her first of two. Shooting her second. She shoots, and that one's in. Emma Pearson torching this, this Whitehall team right now. The line. She's got 14, I think. I can't quite tell from here. Uh, and we're going to have a sub number 24, Ella King, in for, I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like Emma Pearson get her get her uh, a, uh, some, some time on the bench for a little bit. King with the, the pass up to Smith. Smith for the layup, misses the layup. Look like we got a jump ball and that'll be Montague ball. And I'm gonna say, I think it's a great call by uh, head coach Nick Thaler for, for taking Emma out of the game there. You saw in the first half, Connor, she she got quite tired towards the end of that second quarter. Um, and I think with the lead Montague's built here, that's a great decision to get her rested and uh, that she can start this fourth quarter on the tear. Pranger with the second shot from uh, from outside. She's two for two now. Great D by King there. Uh, tips it, Karnas tips it back into her though while she's out of bounds and, and it looks like it's gonna be a Whitehall ball here. We got a 10 point difference. Montague just taking it away this second, second half, first or third quarter, my bad, um, with 25 seconds left. Tipped away by Pranger. That was a quick pass. You heard it on Pranger's hand when it hit. Whitehall's ball with 21 seconds left in this third quarter. Stack set for Whitehall. Over to Ottinger. Stolen by King. King looking up the court. Slowing it down. Passes over to Pranger. Pranger shoots. She misses that one. King with a rebound almost. Tembring steals it. She's up the court. Trap now. King with the... King and Smith with the D. No foul. Looks like it's going to be end of the quarter. Fans are not happy about that one. Um, what do you think about that? I'm not sure why they're not happy, Connor, because I thought that was great defense. So did I. Uh, not reaching, moving your feet, uh, making the other team work for their buckets. Definitely. We got a, a triple sub here for Whitehall going into the second half, uh, two of which have four fouls, and, and the last of which has a uh, I'm not sure yet. I think it's I think it's three. You got to give a lot of credit to Montague here uh, with their star player out, um, down two at halftime to be able to respond like that. Uh, that's some big time stuff yeah. there. You love yeah, to see it. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's just that's a team right there. Uh, knowing when your player's out and when you when you need to step up and play play that just a different way and try to just do everything you can to win a game. That's 
That's exactly what a team is. And I think the, the leader on this team tonight is Emma Peterson. She's put this team on her back. She's At first, she didn't play very good. And then she kind of slowed it down. And, and after a timeout, they, they came out and they looked like a much different team, a much more composed team. And Emma Peterson's been the focal point of that. Um, and, and she slowed the game down. She's hit a bunch of free throws. She's got 14 right now um, and has limited the fouling so that she can stay in this game and continue to lead this team the way she needs to. Certainly. Um, we'll see how Montague responds, though, with Annika Dempsey coming back into the game to start this fourth quarter. Dempsey with actually four fouls. Um, looks like Montague's in a man, man uh, half court set right now. Whitehall with a three out, two in, high low set. Zamagin with the with the ball gets fouled by Pranger. Not in the double or not in the bonus yet. Looks like it's gonna be under the hoop. Ball for Wildcast for 33. Addison it's good to see Whitehall coming out right away and attacking the basket. Definitely. Over to Zamagin. Zamagin to to Karnas. Dempsey in the corner, and Dempsey barely misses three, rims it out. Looks like. Zamagin got fouled on the shot. She's going to be shooting two. Whitehall is really doing what they need to do here in responding. Um, you'd like to see the ball go in the hoop a little bit more, though, if they're going to put a dent in this 10-point lead. Definitely. Um, they're going to have to hit these free throws. These are important free throws, especially in the last quarter. She misses the first. Schwartz in for Smith on Montague's side. Zamagin with her second free throw. She misses that one. Pranger with the rebound. Pranger pushing up the floor over to Baltimore. Yeah. Thaler wants them to slow down. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be out on, on Baltimore last. Baltimore not happy with that one. I'm, I'm not sure if that would have been. Looks like it's Dempsey over to Karnas. And Peterson with the... the High ball pressure. Karnas over to, to, to number 23. Daggett with the shot. Looks like she's on the ground. Not looking good. Looks like she did something to her ankle. It looks like she's in a lot of pain here. Definitely. We've had two big injuries so far. Both starters, both important players on this team. Um, so far we have three players on the court right now from, for Whitehall with four fouls. Um, how do you think that's going to play into the game plan coming down to, the, to say a, a moment where Whitehall needs to foul? Well, I think you got to do I think you got to do a good job of calling timeouts in the right places. Yep. Getting some people off the bench who have less fouls yep. um, and letting them commit those fouls. Yeah. Uh, rather than your starters doing that. Now, how do you get those players off the bench while also keeping your starters in? Do you use timeouts? Do you, do you try and get those foul sub them in after the foul? How do you do that? It's just a lot of clock management, yep. Connor. Um, it can be difficult to do in basketball. Such a quick, uh, rapid game. Um, but it certainly can be done. Um, it takes a lot of communication between the coach and your players uh, to know who, who's following who yep. um, and when to do that. Yep. And we haven't seen that from the from Coach Miller yet as he's just a new coach and, and they, we haven't had many games this season. Um, and I'm kind of excited to see how, how what his clock management is like and what he does in order to, to get this Whitehall team into this game again and, and um, to, to manage that clock coming down to the last five to, to four minutes. That's definitely right. And uh, Daggett is still down um, on the on the court. Looks Trainers like are tending to her cur currently. Looks like Ringer is going to be in um, for her. Um, Ringer with three fouls. Now we have four players on the court with three plus fouls and uh, one with zero. Um, Karna is not fouling, which is surprising for the amount of minutes she's played so far tonight with no fouls. Certainly. And uh, Daggett is helped slowly off the court. Um, she's walking, and that's something you're happy to see. Yep. Doesn't Looks like she's not putting a lot of a lot of weight on that right foot, probably rolled it on the way down or something. Um, hopefully she, she's feeling a little bit better. Um, but I'm guessing she'll be out for the rest of this game. 
King gives the ball to Peterson. Peterson bringing it up the floor. King over to the right side. Peterson bringing it up. Pranger with the screen on the right. Decides to back off it. Over to Johnson. Johnson over to Pranger. Pranger looks to King. King with, with Ferris on her. Fer King going to the rack. Misses the layup. Schwartz with the rebound. Looks like it's going to be off black, and it's going to be Montague Ball. Looks like they're going to go into their line set again. Britta Johnson with the ball out. Over to King. King looking to get a layup. She misses it. Schwartz with the rebound. Ferris with the rebound now. There's the reach. Reach on three. Foul, foul on Peterson. Foul on Peterson. Peterson. Not in the bonus yet, so Ferris will be, it'll be out of bounds, under the hoop. And you'll notice, the ball uh, floor. you'll notice kind of the student sections have quieted down quite a bit here. Yeah, and this is honestly where you need to be the most loud, is this last quarter, especially in a game like this. You'd definitely like to see Whitehall get the energy going a little bit more yep. if they're going to come back in this one. Ringler over to Dempsey in the corner. Dempsey shoots a three, does not make it. Karn is in the corner now with tight defense from Britta. Zamagin with the, the awkward layup. King with the rebound. Looks like it's going to be a jump ball, Montague ball. Hey, Whitehall's getting their shots off, but they're just not falling for him here in the second half. Yep. Looks like Whitehall is going to go into a press. Peterson needs some help. Looks like they're, they're going to face guard Peterson. Peterson with the ball now. Whitehall's backed off the pressure. Looks like Whitehall's going to man to man. Peterson kind of lost. Over to Pranger, bounces off Pranger's foot. Jump ball, gonna be Whitehall's ball. For 23, Lawrence Smith checking in for the Wildcats. King subbed out for Smith. Whitehall has held Montague to that 10 point lead still. Um, let's see if they can get a basket on this possession and bring it a little bit closer. This is an important one. Montague in the zone now. Smith with good outside pressure. Ringler over to Dempsey. Dempsey misses the three. Ringler with the rebound. Gets fouled by Johnson. That'll be Johnson's fourth, I think. It'll be Bottom under the hoop. Johnson's fourth. Whitehall in a stack formation. Dempsey's getting some good looks off, but she's just having a hard time uh, getting that ball to fall. Great back cut by Karnas. She misses the re layup. Rebound by two. Wrapped up. It'll be Ferris on the rebound along with Smith. Looks like it'll be a jump ball. Montague ball. And that missed layup there is a big one. That was a great cut. Just a, just didn't get the layup to go. Just rushed it a little bit. Now we got a shoe tie. And these big rivalry games when you're the underdog, those are the ones you got to have. Yep. Tough pass over to Smith. Ringler gets the steal. Smith on the rebound. Looks like it'll be another jump ball, Whitehall's ball. There you go. Nice job, ladies. Coming from the uh, the Shelby Hart rivalry, Connor, the physicality in this Montague Whitehall rivalry is very similar. Uh, yep. Two schools that just want to beat each other very badly. Yeah. Yep. And there's a lot of fight left in this game and, and left in these players, I think. Screen by Zamagin for Dempsey. Dempsey with the layup. She hits the floater. Pressure by pressure from Whitehall. Back to Smith. Smith looking up the court. Looking to get it to Pranger. Gets double, double dribbles the ball. Turnover Montague. Gonna be Whitehall's ball. Bultima in for Wildcats. Whitehall's doing what they need to do to keep this game close coming down the wire here, Connor. Yep. Bultima in for Smith, and it looks like it's gonna be a timeout. Be a full timeout. So, so far, Whitehall playing great defense. I've noticed that they've decided on, on, on made shots to put somebody on Peterson when she normally would inbound the ball. Uh, what do you think about that? 
Um, I think that I think that's great. You, you want your be, you want your best player on the floor, um, looking to get get them the ball on these set plays. Yep. So is that the right risk with having um, four players with four or four players with three plus fouls? Is that the right move for Coach Milliron here? Um, risking that, sending that, sending. Uh, it looks like Annika Dempsey who has four fouls right now. Um, up and, and playing heavy pressure and risking that foul. Oh, 100%. You got five minutes left. It's a big rivalry game. You got to do what you got to do to win. Yep. And I think one of the important things for Whitehall so far is the fact that Dempsey being out that has limited their scoring production. It definitely has, but you're starting to see it take effect here as uh, I believe Whitehall has outscored Montague here over the last few minutes. Definitely. Um, Garner's bringing up the ball. Looking to get it to Ringler. Ringler with the ball now. Looking to get it back to, to take it to the rack. Karnas with the ball, kicks it over to Dempsey. Dempsey with the ball now. Over to Zamagin. Zamagin with the, the right hook. Two points for Vikings, three. Franklin with the ball now for Montague. My, kicks it back to, to Johnson. Johnson with the heave over to, to Schwartz. Schwartz at the right side. Trapped by, two, by a double. Fouls, fouls, uh, looks like Zamagin right there. And that'll be her second. Sixth or seventh, I'm not sure. Right Whitehall starting to uh, starting to make this one interesting here. Six point game, the energy is picking up. Yep. And they have the ball. Sixth foul for Montague. Looks like Montague's in uh, a man to man defense again. It's a five point game with 427 left. Ball over to Dempsey. Dempsey's getting the screen, denies the screen, goes for the layup. Makes the layup. It's now a three, four point game. Montague with Peterson with the ball. Peterson looking to take it. Peterson drilling back and forth. Shoots a deep three. And she hits it! That's a clutch three for, for Peterson there. Makes it a seven point game, or five point game. Seven point game, my bad. She's been taking those deep threes all night and uh, she finally got one to drop. I'm not sure that's the one you want to take, uh, but it worked out for Montague there. Looks like a foul on five would be her third. Team seventh, they'll be in the bonus now. Whitehall has limited the foul in the second half, especially or this fourth quarter, especially with their, their uh, three players with four fouls right now. Ringler misses her first on the end one. King with the ball now. King looking up the court. Kicks it back to Peterson. Peterson with the ball now. Play smart, play smart. And I think you're gonna see looking Montague slow up. the ball down here yep, quite definitely. a bit. Yep, definitely. Looking to slow it down a little bit. You gotta start trapping. Kicks it over to Schwartz. Schwartz up. Misses, gets blocked by Ferris. Looks like we're gonna have a foul. Not sure who it's on. If it's on anybody, Looks like it's on Ferris, and she has fouled out of this game. That's an important foul, and she'll be replaced by Ashley Tembrink. Hey, great game, Autumn! Now we still have four players with four fouls, or three plus fouls. I think that's going to be the, the first foul out of a few here, Connor. Definitely. Schwartz shooting free throws. She has not shot free throws well so far this game. Shooting her first. Makes her first. She'll have a second. And it's good to see Catchmark interns Owen Rath and James Cloud start to get involved with the student section a little bit. They were off to the side over there for quite a while. Definitely, and they, they have a game, uh, I think, tomorrow, um, an important one against a, a conference rival. I'm not sure who it is. Trapped by Montague. Over to Ringler. Stolen by Schwartz. Now it's jump ball. It'll be a jump ball. Looks like it'll be a Montague ball. Great defensive possession there for Montague. Um, exactly what they needed it to do. Time out, Whitehall. I'm curious what Coach Milliron draws up here with three minutes left, down seven, or eight. Yes, eight, I think. Yes, eight. Yep, yep, it's eight, it's eight, Connor. You just graduated this year too, didn't you? 
Yeah. Maybe. We won't talk about it. Uh, so far, it looks like the, the foul spread has been a little bit better for Whitehall. Not fouling nearly as much. Um, it's, it's 17 fouls for Montague, uh, 9 for Whitehall. Uh, next foul for Montague, uh, either is somebody's coming out of the game or you're going to have three, four players with four, um, or you're going to be in the double bonus, or all three, possibly. Um, so uh, I'm curious what Coach Milliron draws up here or who's going to be, what this rotation's going to be like, um, especially with, with the foul situation. Um, Montague in a much better position, especially up up uh, eight here. What do you think that Montague needs to do to, to, to secure this game? I think you need to slow the game down, and I think you need to stick to your guns and keep attacking the basket here. Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree. The more you attack the basket, the more likely you are to get a foul. Ellie King taking it out on the sideline. Whitehall with the heavy press pressure. Ella with the tough turnover. Pranger with the hustle. Looks like it's going to be white ball. King taking it out again. Gives it to Peterson. Looking to get it to the middle. Whitehall with the tough pressure. No trap on the corner. Peterson with the layup. She gets fouled. It looks like it's going to be by number three, Lucy Zamagen. And she will be out of the game, and they are now in the double bonus. If you're Whitehall, I think it's time to start putting up some three-pointers on offense Definitely. here, Connor. You need Just a spark. Just trying to get, trying to get something going, trying to get something in, um, especially coming down to these That's last last few minutes. Looks like Strandberg's in for uh, for uh, Lucy Zamagen. And as the clock winds down here in the fourth quarter, uh, that three-pointer by Emma Peterson is looking uh, even bigger and bigger as we yep. as this game starts to wrap up. I would say she definitely has what I would call the clutch gene. Um, I don't know if you believe in that, but uh, it, she has hit many a bunch of clutch free throws down the ro lane or down the, the final of this game, and, and a bunch of free throws that's definitely propelled this Montague team to a, a, a lead in this game so far. Looks like we'll have a jump ball and it'll be Whitehall's ball, and another injury. She gets up. Strandberg's up, slow but up. Let's see what uh, Whitehall can come up with here on this offensive possession. Definitely. Karnas with the ball. Montague in a 3-2 uh, zone. Doesn't want it to get into the paint. Spreading it out wide. Dempsey with a three. She misses it. King with the rebound. Dives on it. We got a jump ball. And it'll be Montague ball, and that's a that's an important jump ball for Montague. Allows them to slow the clock down a little bit, or slow the game down a little bit, and try and get the ball, uh, keep the ball in their hands, and keep possession time up. Certainly. Dempsey is just having a really hard time getting that three-point ball to fall tonight. Bring her with the three. She hits it. That's a clutch three. She's two for three, two for three from the three-point line now. Three for four from the uh, field goal range. That puts Montague up 11 now. And Pranger puts now. the dagger in Whitehall for this one. She gets fouled by Baltimore, blocking foul, and she'll go to the line for a one and one. Yeah, that three was a clutch three. This Montague team looking to prove to be uh, a clutch oh, team overall. Um, though that was an important three, and I think that could be maybe, it's a little early to say, but that could possibly be the dagger uh, right there that they, they needed to... Uh, Close, start to close the door on this Whitehall team. Oh, I think it's going to be the dagger here, Connor. Uh, Whitehall's managed 10 points in the second half. It's going to be tough to put up another 11 to tie this thing. Well, they got one of those, one of those 12, and that'll be uh, Dempsey's 11th. She's shooting her second. She hits her second. Great free throw shooter so far tonight. It's great to see her get the get ball to Pranger. Pranger with the ball. That's a 
Looks like we got to travel on a little bit of a trip from, from Pranger. Connor, do you think for Dempsey, seeing the ball go through the hoop on those two free throws is going to help her get that three-point game going? Possibly. Um, definitely, I know when I was shooting, if I see one go through, it's a, it's a game changer at least. Um, I know it's, it's uh, shooters know that. I know you might not know that, but. Oh, okay now. Ball over to Ring Ringler, over to Tembrink. Awkward layup. Ball to, ball to King. Rita pulls it out. Schwartz with the with the chase down. Showing her athleticism there. Steal by Tembrink. Tembrink over to Carnes. Carnes over to Dempsey. Dempsey shoots the three. And I mean exactly what we said. You see it go through once and you see it go through a few more. That is a big time bucket there by Dempsey. Johnson over to Peterson. Peterson. Followed by Dempsey. That'll be her fifth. I don't know if that was the right foul in that situation after hitting an important three like that. That'll be her fifth and she'll be out. Yeah, and I'll be interested to see here if Whitehall's gonna be able to get any offense going with Dempsey out of this one. I think Me you'd too. like to see Whitehall call a timeout after that made three-pointer and uh, regroup a little bit. Definitely. Peterson shooting well from the free throw line so far tonight. Has her, has her next two. Peterson for the Peterson with her second after making her first. She makes the second. It'll be a timeout, full timeout for Coach Nick Thaler and the Montague Wildcats. One twenty-seven to go. What do you think that? The Cats need to do, and, and the Vikings, on the other hand, too, need to do in order to either win this game or, or make a comeback here. Well, if you're Whitehall, you got to put up a lot of points in a little bit of time. Um, that, can, that can be tough to do. If you're Montague, uh, you just don't want to see them send in Whitehall to the line, uh, and you don't want to see them forcing up shots they don't need to force up. Yep, stalling the clock out, letting it go, um, not fouling, almost to the point where if you need to, you let a bucket go in just to not foul and get the ball back. Certainly. Um, there's no shot clock in the MHSAA. Um, that, that plays a big factor uh, down the wire here in some of these close games. Definitely. How do you feel about the shot clock in, in the MHSAA, just now that you say it? Man, a lot of people have been talking about it lately. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. I think it makes the game a little bit faster. Definitely. Um, I'm not sure if schools have the resources to implement that quite yet, um, but you'd like to see it soon. Mm -hmm. I think it will change some of these, these late game situations and the way coaches coach and run offenses. Um, and I think it's it would be a definitely a, a, a maybe not widely accepted change, but uh, important change for, for the, the MHSAA and, and it's all of its affiliate schools. Yeah, and I think it I think it really helps uh, I think it would really help high school players prepare for the college level with that definitely. rule implemented. Karn is with the ball, it looks like she reached on King reached on her and it will be a one in one shot. There'll be the Follow eighth team shot, King. team foul, and King's third. That's not what you want to do there if you're Montague. You can't be reaching uh, in a close game with one minute left. Definitely. You're letting Whitehall back into this one if these two free throws go down. Carnes misses the one and one. Schwartz over to Peterson. Peterson hotly trailed by Carnes. Carnes is the one you want to foul if you're Whitehall. Needs to get it across the line. Does with a great screen by Schwartz. Over to Br Johnson. Johnson to Schwartz. Schwartz misses. Schwartz gets a rebound. Gets her own rebound again. Looks like we'll have a jump ball and that'll be Whitehall's ball. Great job by Whitehall there uh, to get the ball back without fouling. Definitely. I think Montague might have burned just enough time off the clock though. You never know, you could have a Tracy McGrady out here. 11 with th 13 seconds to go. Or is it 13 with 11 to go? One of the two. Over to Carnes. Carnes misses the jumper. Rebound by Britta. Looks like we'll have another jump ball after a, a fight between Johnson and Schwartz, their own team. Montague ball.
Montague with a nine point lead. Whitehall looking to trap. Johnson over to Schwartz, Schwartz over to King. And you gotta foul King now if you're Whitehall. Boltema. Boltema with a good shot. King with the rebound. King over to Peterson. Peterson dribbling the clock out. Get up here, trap! Pearson dribbling around, trying to stall the clock out. And I think that's going to do it for this one, folks. Uh, with Emma Peterson dribbling the final seconds out here and a, uh, a late foul by Whitehall. Looks like that'll be Tembrink's fifth. She'll be out of the game. And that'll be the game, I think, unless you can score nine and 7.6 seconds. Emma Peterson here looking for her 21st and 22nd. Leading score of this game, leads the box score. Um, definitely been the key factor in this Montague team. Definitely stepped up when, when the, the uh, what I would call the star player for this Montague team is out and, and did and, and played her leader role to a T and showed these cats what they needed to do and led this team to this victory. Um, not only did she do it from the free throw line, she did it from a point guard role, slowing the game down, making sure she was doing what was needed uh, to get her teammates open looks and get them where they needed to be. It's been an absolutely dominant performance from Eva Peterson. Huge game for her tonight, and that's exactly how you need to respond if you're Montague. And that's it, Montague wins 44 to 34 in their home gym against their rival, Mon or against their rival Whitehall, um, and uh, that was an exciting game. It was close all the way up until about three quarters of the way through the fourth, or two, a quarter of the way through the fourth quarter. Um, what do you think was Montague did well in this game, and what do you think Wyoming needs to take away from this game? Well, I think Montague did a good job responding to adversity there. Uh, with their best player going down early, they responded, and they were still able to put up a lot of points, play great defense, come back from a de halftime deficit, um, and that's big-time stuff that you see these uh, – teams that make late postseason runs, that's what they're able to do is they're Definitely. able to respond to adversity. Definitely. Uh, from Whitehall's side of things, they did. I thought they did a fantastic job at, at taking the lead before halftime. This is not something they were expected to do. Um, but in these rivalry games, anything can happen, Connor. Um, and they came ready to play today, and so you've got to give them a lot of credit for that. Yep. Um, I think something White, I, I'll give Whitehall props for is even though they did have foul, a lot of uh, players foul out right at the end, they kept their composure and they tried their best to get back in this game and unfortunately it just wasn't meant to be. Um, and, and it looks like we're gonna be uh, wrapping it up for tonight. Um, this is Connor Rath and uh, the voice of BC Pizza actually in heart, Jonah Kelly with your uh, Catchmark Sportsnet live stream crew. Um, and, and we'll be signing off for tonight. It was a great game um, and we'll see you in the next live stream. Sounds good, thanks for tuning in.